welcome back to the channel. I'm popping on with a bit of a tutorial today. Um, I bought these record cards from WH Smith last week. Um, and for the purpose of putting them, using them in albums. Now I'm making an album for Jer, who won my second prize in my 400 Tubby giveaway. And she contacted me and when I asked her what she would like, she likes, um, like... Not so, not so, like a mixture between steampunk and journal. Basically, she likes like old bits that are lying around and you know, very sort of oldy, vintagey, and things like that. So, I'll give you a sneak peek of the cover. Um, here so you can see I've used this really dark green hessian, these, these gorgeous papers, I've used vintage buttons, the trims. It's really, really aged and everything i don't know if it's shown up properly on camera obviously it's nowhere near finished but this is what i've started to do all different fabrics and these are just wee remnants that i had lying about and i've been making envelopes and all different bits and pieces so it's a bit of sort of like a junk journal but it's an album and this is a chipboard album so obviously it looks quite thin just now but by the time it's finished it's going to be a really thick album so here we go this is how i use my inks and things. Now what I'm going to ink up today to show you is some of these um, record cards. Now these are the smaller sizes. These are the 127 by 76 millimetres. So I'll take out some of them. And then I also have this order book that I got. Again, I buy these um, to put into, to age up and put into albums. So I'll go to the one that we've not used and I'll pull this one out. Now, I'm going to show you a few examples of ones that I've already done today. So, this is how the record card starts out. Just white with a blue line. And this is the ones that I have been working on today. So, they are super cool. I don't know if you can see all the ageing on them. It looks like they've got watermarks. You can get different variations on colour. They're so cool, and once these are stamped up, um, they look amazing. Now these look, compared to this, they look really old and really vintage. But I absolutely love them. And then, this one isn't completely dry, but I'll show you anyway. So this is the order forum. It's a normal white order forum with the black writing. And this one is in the middle of drying, but as you can see, it's stained. And it looks really old. I've done some stamping on it as well. And then this is another half of one that I've done that I've made into an envelope. So this is just a little envelope. And it just opens up like so. Right, I've moved it over here because I think the lighting is a bit better. So... Like I was saying, this is the one that I've done. It's still a wee bit damp, still to dry. And this is the one that I've done, and it did dry. And you can see I've got the wee tears in it and things. And then what I've done was made this little envelope, and I just put, this is a Canada stamp that I got from Mary Hill in one of my packages, and I made it into a little envelope that just opens up, and you can pop anything you like, little buttons or... Um, some ribbon, anything like that, and pop it in. So I think that's really cute. So let's show you a few of the techniques that I use. Now, oh, also I wanted to show you, this was some cream ribbon. And you can see it's turned out lovely. And then the hessian, I don't know if you can see it as much on the hessian, but put some on that as well so that's some bits and pieces that I'm going to be using so what I do is you need um, either a glass mat or you could use some baking paper um, or some vellum or anything like that anything that's really quite slidey you could use a tray you could use a plate and um, anything like that you could use you just need the slidey um, surface now i know my nails are dirty in case anybody notices and that is because they're full of paint because i've already just been doing this technique now 
the first one I'm going to show you is with this paper. Now this is the parchment paper that I got from eBay and it's absolutely lovely and you'll see this is cream. So I don't, I mean you can stain this with coffee and it turns out absolutely stunning. But what I'm going to show you with this one, actually I might show you the two, I'll show you the difference. So we'll cut this, we'll just tear this in half. And the first one I'm going to show you, and the reason I'm doing this is to show you the difference in colour between the white paper and the cream paper once you've stained it. So what we're going to use for this first one is the ink. So this is the Adirondack ink by Ranger that I'm using and it is called Sandal. Now it's a kind of sort of yellow, okra colour, um, anything, it's like, you can see it here, you'll see it once I put it on, it's like a sort of burnt yellowy colour, but it's called sandal. So I'm just going to pop some of that down on my mat. Now you don't have to use these colours, you can use your own colours and get lots of fantastic different effects. So all I do first of all, is pop my page down on the first ink and clean up the ink and you'll see it starts to soak through the paper and this is the effect that you get and it's absolutely gorgeous it looks like the paper has been it's old and it's been watermarked so it's really really lovely now what you can you can take this um, a step further with the ink you can see it's coming through on the other side, which is really nice. Um, if you want to take it a stitch further, this is really a really simple te technique. You just scrunch up your paper as much as you like. The more you do it, obviously the more, the better it will look. And then, flatten it out, take your ink, again this is a sandal, and just run it over the top, all the creases, and I do this front and back, and you get, I don't know if you can quite see that, all the ink hits on the peaks, I'll run over it with the, this is a distress ink, because again it's by Ranger, it's Tim Holtz, and it's a vintage photo, and I'll run over the peaks with that, um, I love the vintage photo, for this technique because it, it just gives it that sort of burnt aged effect so that is our aged paper and I think it looks absolutely stunning and that is just using two different coloured inks you don't have to use the sandal if you've only got the vintage photo you can go straight on and use the vintage photo so that is that one. Obviously that one doesn't need to get left to dry. You can go ahead and put that in your album. You can stamp on it. You can make it in um, a page for your book. You can make it in an envelope. Anything you like. So that is the first technique just with the inks. And then with this side, we're going to do roughly sort of the same sort of technique again. But we're going to use some water as well. So I'm just going to pop down more of that ink. Again, just... Mop it up off. You see now why you need the glass surface. Again, it's turned out gorgeous. Scrunch it up. I love doing this technique because it's really messy and it's just you can get right in there. It's it's like people who like baking and putting their hands in the bowls and get right in there with the ingredients. And then at this time, I'm just going to go straight over with the vintage four. can see that okay and you see it's hitting all the peaks it's absolutely gorgeous now what I'm going to do next is take some water now all I'm using is this is one of these squeezy paint brushes and I've just took off the top so the paint brush that you can put the water in but you can use anything you can use your fingers if you like I'm just using this now, if you just add, I don't know if you can see this, little droplets of water, you are activating the ink and it will start to spread. Can you see that? Let me just pick up some more. And you're just putting it all the way over. 
and that's why I like the vintage photo because it's such an aged colour. So just putting it all over and then what I do is just flip it over and press it down. And this helps absorb and you can see it's all starting to look um, like that. What do you call that? Is it like the speckled aged, um, do you know what I mean? I'm trying to think of the word. It's old anyway, it's like an old speckled effect. Now you can push your paper quite flat. Soak up all that ink. And then what I do is add a wee bit more on this side. Now you could go further with this and add coffee onto it at this point if you want. But I'm going to show you the coffee on the order forum and the other... Um, and the record card story so this one I'm just going to do the ink if you can see that it is looking lovely already and then you just put this up here to dry yep and um, now that one's got I don't think I oh, did I have an example I don't think so, but basically it comes out like this, but it comes out like all, I'll show you if I can, what I'll do is, once that one's dried, at the end of the video, I will pause it and when it's dried I will show you, so what I'm doing with this one, this is the one that we just inked up and didn't add any water, but I'm, because I've got some water left on my mat, I'm just adding the water, and you see you just press it on, So, and then I'm going to hang this up here to dry. So that is the process with the ink. Now, how did I get to if, here? This is a cold coffee dyeing technique. Um, that one was the ink technique, just using your pigment inks um, and water basically and you'll see at the end it turns out absolutely fab the papers look amazing so how did i get this gorgeous effect from this you can see it's so different pop this down it doesn't matter if this is still a little bit wet because it's going to get wet anyway so pop this down now at this point if you want to do like any stamping like i've got this um it's a, uh, oops, it's dripping. It's, it's just a love saying, it's a love script. And, give me a second. I'm going to give this a bit white because it's got slightly wet. That's dripping on it. At this stage, if you want to put on any script or any stamping, do it now. Or even any writing. Um, like with it being a ledger page, if you're nice at writing, you could write... Um, or if you've got any like these old Paris stamps or anything like that with the Paris writing, you could do that. So what I'm going to do is go in with my Tim Holtz. The other one, i done it with this one. You can see it's sort of a currenty colour. I've done this with the Adirondack Current. And these are the Earth Tones um, raised felt die pad. So it's absolutely cool. Inks are acid free. Oh, these are dye inks. Sorry, these are dye inks. That's what they call them. I thought it was um, pigment inks. I think they're kind of the same, but these call, they're called dye inks. So I'm just inking up the stamp with Tim Holt and I'm just randomly, this is upside down, but it does not matter. I'm not going to be reading it anyway. And I'm just third and fourth and fifth generation stamping it on both sides and it really just looks like old script you do not have to do this i'm just doing it for my album that i'm making so now what we want to do now is get i've got some coffee here and this is just um instant coffee it's nescafe but it can be any um i've got some spilt here as you'll see because i've been playing about all afternoon so I'm just going to pop the wee bits on my paper. So you're just randomly popping them on. 
And then I just sprinkle it on. There's not, you can't put, it's up to you totally. And obviously the more you, that you put on, the more colour your paper will have. And then, what I've done in here, in these two wee bottles, now you do not have to do this, you can go to the next step and just add the water on. But what I've put in here is some paints. Now, I have mixed up some, these are just the Royal and Line Nickel paints, and this is yellow okra watercolour. So I've just mixed that up in this little box here with just some water. And then this one is, this is the burnt umber that I've used. And I've just put them in with some water. Now this totally depends on what colour you want your page to be. If you want it to just be white, like it started out like a white document, and it's aged, that's absolutely fine. You just put the water on your coffee and it will activate it. If you want it to look like it's cream or it's been really old, like it's um, discoloured with age, adds a little paint. So this is the yellow okra. So just giving it a little shake and just pop a few little dots. Try and pull this forward a bit so you can see it a bit better. Put my coffee back on. A few little drops all over the page. If you don't have these wee bottles, you can mix these up in a palette. And then I've got the, the burnt umber. And this is quite dark, so I'm just going to add a couple of spots. You don't need much of that. And then we're going to go over them with our water. So I've just got a wee tub here. Again, you could use your fingers for this. You could use a teaspoon. I'm just using this little... Um, the end of this water brush and I'm just adding water on my coffee to activate it so you can see it's really fun and it's actually really an easy technique but the results are amazing now I do this with cold water I know a lot of people do it with hot water and then they put it in the oven to dry it. I don't. I like the tip, this technique because I don't have to go down the stairs and start faffing about with my oven. I just do this cold water technique and the coffee still dissolves just the same. You still get the same colour, same results. You just don't have to bake it in the oven. It just takes a little bit longer. So once I've got to this stage, you'll see there's still lots of white here. Once I've got to this stage, I tip it over. And I let it soak in. Like that. Just give it a really good press. Now I don't add any other colour on this side because it doesn't need it. I just add more water. And you might be thinking, wow, the page is going to be soaking, and it is, but you want that. Because when it dries, that's what gives it that sort of feeling, that crinkly, old feeling. It's really cool. So now I just get my hand in here, and I just help the coffee along underneath by pressing it in. And you'll see the colour starts to go an absolutely gorgeous like aged sort of yellowy browny colour like so and then be very careful because at this point it is really fragile and just make sure it's all covered where you want it to be if at this point you thought hmm it's a little bit yellow or it's a little bit dark or I want it more just add a little bit more coffee now what I do now is lift this up and put it in a wee ball and squeeze it out. And don't be scared of this because it is supposed to look aged. That is the whole point. Now my water, what I'm going to do, my colour is starting to run away and I don't want to waste any of that. So I'm going to pop on my cards so that, that none of that gets wasted. 
we'll pop that on. Now this bit here, be really careful. Now you can see I'm not trying to push it, I'm just teasing it open, sort of letting it open by itself. Just giving it a little shake. Because I don't mind a couple of tears in it, but I don't want big holes in it because I like making pages out of this and tags and envelopes. So I don't want big rips unless I specifically do. So I'm just giving them giving it a little helping hand on come out and you will see that this has came out absolutely stunning. It doesn't resemble anything like we started off with. Look at this. It is absolutely beautiful. You can just see the... Um, I don't know if you can see it, the stamping underneath. It looks like old writing. I don't know if that's shown up on camera, but it's absolutely gorgeous. So now you can see this. So now I can. you can either put this on the radiator... Or what I do is I hang it up to dry. I've got a wee set of flamingo lights up here above my head. And I've got some wee pegs on them. And I just leave it up there to dry. So we'll go back to these cards. And we're just going to dip in here. Now this point again, if you, need, if you think you need to add more yellow or more brown or more coffee, you can, also, you can add in... I didn't need to there, but I'll just show you. Just add in some more wee bits of coffee. When you add the coffee, just turn it over into the liquid. Like so. And then, you have these gorgeous coffee splattered tags now you can leave it like this if you like with the coffee on it um, I do that with some of them I like to see the wee lumps of coffee or you can turn it back over and you can take some more water and she says mm -hmm. you can add the water and just I do it like this I like to tap it Alright, and then at this stage we just do our crumpling again, crumple it right up like we're squeezing it out, like that, and I meant to say if you want to stamp on these again you just do it before we add, you can do it afterwards if you want but just bear in mind you won't get a totally flat image because of the creases in the card. Um, so look how gorgeous this is and how it's going to be when it dries and then this one absolutely stunning love them and as you can see I've still got lots on here that I can go ahead and do more beautiful so again I would leave those ones to dry now I would go ahead and soak this all up I'll use some um this wee bit of hessian. And this just darkens up the colour of the hessian and it makes it look really old and I'll pop that there. What did I do with this? So we'll go to the next step. So I'll take this all off. I'll pause you a wee second. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you can do to these to make them look even older. I like them the way they are. I don't know if you can see this one has the age speckles on it and it's just absolutely stunning. Um, what you can do is again, you can go back to your ink and you can just go over lightly with your ink pad over the creases. And this is just a vintage photo again if you want to make it look a bit more pronounced so that is that one what else you can do is take a pair of scissors 
she says. If I can find them. I've been so busy making this. There they are. Oh, God, all day. I'm losing things. Open your scissors. Take the edge of the scissors. And run it along the edge of the card. I always take it between my fingers, my thumb and my finger. And I just run it along the edge. And we'll see if, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a lot of dust coming off. And this just sort of makes the edges look less new. Now when you take the edge off, you're going to see some white. And I'll show you how I get rid of that. So I'm just edging this up. So, if you can see that, you've got your gorgeous edges. So now it doesn't look... You can see this one has got the new edge and this one's got the old edge. And what you can do is just take your ink, one of your daubers, now you don't have to do it with a dauber, and just go around the edge like this. If you don't have the dauber, just take your ink pad and go around the edge. Now I don't do every bit of it, I just sort of do it like this to make it stand out and you can see that makes it look really vintage and old um, so the last thing I would do if I was going to make it even more old looking is put a couple of tears in it and this is really simple to do and it's just like taking a wee triangle out like this and you can just do it a couple of places I would say and it's just as easy as that now that came from this so there is your difference absolutely huge difference brand new it looks a hundred years old and these ones that I've just had the coffee staining done now me what I would do is I would make this into a tag. You can go ahead and two seconds. So I've got this stamp set here, which is really cute. So I would take this off, pop this on here, and I would use my brown distress ink again, my vintage photo. Just go all over it and then add it on here like that. And I would stamp it over. And I'd probably do it half off and half on. Let's give that a good press down. Like so. So you can see it has a stamped image. I know it's not exactly the clearest because it's on cream, but it really, I don't know if you can see it better from back here, it really adds an effect onto it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And then, you can go ahead and add whatever you feel like. This one has got thank you on it, so we'll go ahead and put this on. Um, what have I done with my... I don't know. I don't know what I've got. I've got my wee block, but I don't know. Matter. I don't know that it's there. I'll put my thank you on the smaller block. Again, go in with my distress ink. And I'm just going to stamp thank you on there, which hasn't really shown up very well, so I'm going to try it again with the current added on deck. I'll try and go over the same sort of place and we'll press it down there. There we go. So now, I've stamped it, thank you here, and I've got my gorgeous image, which is really cute. And if you wanted to, you could go in with a gold pen and highlight some of the areas, because I think gold works really well with the vintage look. Um, but I'm aware of time, so I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is just finish this off as a tag. I've just got my 
punch here and I'm just going to line it up where I want it punch it through and I'm going to take some we'll just take some jute oops my goodness run away jute string I'll just take some jute string and pop it in Okay, so I hope that's answered a few of your questions about how I do my cold coffee dyeing and my ink dyeing. So this is the paper um, with the ink dyeing. It turned out really cool. And then again, once it dries, if you want, you can scrunch it up again to make it look even more aged. Like so. That is that one. And then we have... This one is still a wee bit wet. This is our ledger, our order form, and this is what it's like when it's dry. Absolutely gorgeous. Bearing in mind that this is what it started off like. So, massively different. And then we have our finished little tag. Which is absolutely gorgeous. I've just put the jute string on, and then we have these that you could use as little journal and tags, or you could turn them into photo mats. They're absolutely stunning. And again, this is what this came from. So from that to that, and that, and that. So I hope you like this video tutorial guys. If you've got any questions at all, put them in the comments box down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you like this video, give me a wee thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell for my notifications. And yeah, any questions at all or you want to see me do any of the techniques again, let me know and I will do. But thanks very much for watching guys. Bye bye.